and welcome to this manufacturing process technology part 2 module 11. Uh, we were just discussing about the various mechanical removal processes like abrasive jet machining and in that context we had actually tried to learn how the AJM process really works. And the material removal on the AJM takes place due to the impingement of the fine abrasive particles and uh, the abrasive particles are typically about 0 0.025 millimeter diameter and uh, that makes it about 25 microns and the air discharges at a pressure of about uh, close to <coughs> almost uh, tens of atmospheres. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the jet speed of the air is about close to 150 to 300 meters per second. The tip is made up of a material which is hard and tough so that there is no abrasion. So, typically tungsten carbide, sapphire, these are some of the materials which are employed in the uh, making of some nozzle tip. The jet diameter is typically about <coughs> 0.3 to 0.5 millimeters that makes it about 300 to 500 microns. And there is this very important parameter called nozzle tip distance which means that how much distance the nozzle is from the surface which is being machined. And uh, you know this really is uh, an optimized distance because there is certain distance for which the MRR is the maximum. I will talk in details about this later as we go along the process, but the idea is that air and abrasive together they fall with a straight jet into the surface and creates a lot of wear on the surface. Typically the workpiece is brittle fractured. Okay. So, the way that material removal takes place here is that there is let us say this abrasive grain which is otherwise sharp on all corners and it comes at a certain velocity and strikes on the workpiece. So, it creates a fracture region and this fracture gets further removed by flowing uh, from the gas or the <coughs> air that carries the abrasive and uh, gets rebounded back from the surface. So, it carries away the wear particle and creates a cavity on the workpiece and this fracture by fracture or cavity by cavity there is a material removal which takes place from the surface. So, if I look at the process parameters of AJM uh, for the first time a model was suggested by Sarkar and Pandey in the year 1980 which talks about the MRR to be related to the various uh, uh, you know different uh, process related parameters like number of abrasive particles impacting per unit time given by the term z, the diameter of the abrasive grain uh, mean diameter given by term d, the velocity at which uh, the abrasive grain falls onto the surface and then also uh, it is uh, as a ratio of the density of the abrasive material to the hardness uh, of the work material hw. Okay, so, that ratio is also pretty critical for the purpose of uh, determining the MRR and there are various uh, order of magnitude analysis which is done for the various parameters and ultimately the MRR is related is directly related to uh, the first power of the number of abrasive uh, particles impacting per unit area, the third power of the diameter uh, about 1.5 uh, power of the velocity and the density to hardness ratio it is about 3 fourth or 0.75 uh, as a power. So, that is how the variation happens. <coughs> the uh, term zeta here is a constant uh, which actually also comes from experimental uh, monitoring of MRR with respect to all these different parameters. So, this is actually an empirical formula which more comes out because of uh, you know some regression analysis done on the actual process, but I when doing the USM process we would like to do some geometrical uh, derivation which may result in some identical kind of formulation for the particular MRR uh, that is in question. So, the process uh, characteristics can be evaluated by judging the, the material removal rate, the geometry of the cut, the roughness of the surface that is produced, the roughness of the rate of the nozzle wear and these are mostly the uh, four main um, characteristics related to any abrasive jet machining process and uh, the major parameters further which control such characteristics uh, quantities are the abrasive itself where the composition matters, the strength of the abrasive matters, the size and mass of, uh, at which the abrasive is flowing in the particular uh, you know gas sample that matters. Uh, the, the gas where again the composition pressure and velocity makes a difference the, and further the nozzle and the nozzle material where the geometry of the nozzle, the material of the nozzle and of course, the nozzle tip distance, the distance from the uh, work piece and so its inclination with respect to the work piece. So, these are some of the major uh, parametric issues 
uh, which actually control these process characteristics like MRR, the cut geometry, you know, the surface roughness, rate of wear or the nozzle and so on and so forth. So, let us look individually and some of these different aspects related to the AJM process and try to figure out how the change in the different parameters would result in a change in the process characteristics that we are uh, uh, trying to analyze. So, when we look at abrasives mainly there are two different types of abrasives which are used. One is of course, the aluminum oxide Al203 which is again very hard as a material and then of course, silicon carbide typically grains uh, with the mean diameter of 10 to 15 microns are deployed and they are also readily available commercially for only this purpose where either you use them for um, you know the uh, the abrasive jet machining or the abrasive water jet machining where there is again a mixture or a slurry created between the abrasive and the water uh, and the water instead of air is the throwing medium of particles to, to a particular work surface. Uh, also for good wear action on the surfaces, the abrasive grain should have sharp edges. Uh, reuse of the abrasive powder is normally not recommended because uh, obviously, if you think of the sharpness of the, uh, the edges as you do different fractures or subsequent fractures would keep on decreasing. And so, the grain sharpness would decrease as a function of time if you are cutting, uh, you know, using the same abrasive grains every time. And so, what would typically happen is that because of the decreasing in this capacity of cutting, there would be a slow MRR and there is also a tendency of clogging the nozzles because of which again the nozzle shape, geometry may change with time and then uh, you know the estimated profile that is supposed to make the impression of the cut or the fracture would change as a, as a function of time which is actually not uh, very good uh, have or, or, or sort of not a good various uh, process deviation. And, and that needs to be controlled uh, quite frequently. So, the mass flow rate of the abrasive particles, they of course, depend on the pressure and the flow rate of the, of the gas and there is something called an optimum mixing ratio. You can think of it that if supposing you are keeping on loading the abrasive onto the air or in case of uh, abrasive water jetting machining the, the water. So, uh, there is a certain limit up to which the loading would take place as well as the mean free path would be good enough for the particles to have individual momentum. Ultimately, it is the momentum which is getting um, you know uh, transferred onto the work piece which results in the impingement of the fracture. So, if supposing the, the particles are too closely loaded because of the high density of the particle in the air or the mixing ratio is probably high. So, in that event you may not be able to realize much momentum transfer because there would be intergrain collisions and such collisions are to be avoided as far as possible whenever we talk about this grain throw kind of processes uh, where mechanical removal of material is involved through fracture. So, when the mass flow rate of the abrasive increases, the material removal rate increases as you can see here, but if you are trying to change the mixing ratio, there is only an optimum best up to which the MRR would be the highest beyond which there would be a again a intergain collision and reduction in the mean free path resulting in slowly you know decrease in the MRR value. So, there is a plateauing optimum which happens in terms of mixing ratio whereas, in case of mass flow rate it is almost a direct proportionality which, which uh, is obeyed. So, that is regarding the abrasive and the way it flows. The gas of course, is a very pretty important uh, uh, constituent of the abrasive jet machining. So, typically the uh, pressures uh, that an AJM normally operates are in the range of 0 0.2 to about 1 9 Newton per meter square. Uh, the composition of the gas and the uh, high velocity has a significant impact on the MRR even if the mixing ratio is not changed. Uh, try and by and large it is important to avoid having a corrosive gas because uh, although sometimes deliberately corrosive gas is used because you want to pre soften the material. But uh, in this particular case uh, because it is an open chamber process, it is a better idea uh, not to play around with the gas too much and uh, make it like environmentally benign or uh, not affecting the operator. So, obviously, should be non corrosive as far as possible. Talking about the nozzle, it is one of the vital elements uh, which is uh, responsible for again uh, controlling uh, almost all the process characteristics. The nozzle material should avoid any significant <coughs> uh, wear, uh, it should have a good working lifetime probably uh, because you know there is a continuous flow of the abrasive and there is always a tendency of the abrasive to uh, change the, the nozzle orifice. 
So, uh, it is important to match the hardness of the nozzle material in a manner, so that such uh, uh, opening with time does not take place. So, uh, average lifetime of some of the conventional materials which are used for nozzles like let us say this turbine tungsten carbide is about 12 to 30 hours. Uh, if you are using a sapphire nozzle, although it is little more expensive, but the approximate lifetime increases to about 300 hours, it is uh, higher than tungsten carbide and it is more durable. And for all practical purposes, the cross sectional area of a nozzle uh, or an orifice is held between 0 0.05 to 0 0.2 millimeter square. There can be uh, right angled or straight head nozzles with uh, various cross sections like circular or uh, square cross sections. But you know the idea is that you have to keep while uh, initiating the process every time you, you have to keep a close watch on the nozzle orifice and if you see subsequent uh, deformation or uh, change in the orifice you must think of or plan of uh, removing the nozzle and changing with the new one. So, that is how um, the different process uh, characteristics uh, go. The other important issue as I told you is also known as the nozzle tip distance or what we commonly know as standoff distance and in fact, this changes uh, quite a bit of uh, the geometry of the, the cut that is eventually getting formulated in terms of the spread and the depth uh, which would be caused because of such a throw of material. And also uh, there is an optimum best <coughs> uh, nozzle tip distance over which uh, there is actually um, maximum material removal rate. So, you can think of it in this manner that supposing the, uh, the nozzle is too close to the work piece and the distance allowing the abrasives to be thrown out of the jet. Uh, while getting accelerated is, is very small. So, you already know that uh, you know uh, by one of the Newton's laws V square uh, becomes equal to uh, it is actually almost proportional to the acceleration and also to the distance. So, if you are allowing the distance to be more or distance of traverse of the particles to be more obviously the velocity uh, that it would finally end up and the kinetic energy would be much higher. Now, if the nozzle were too close and the, uh, the abrasive grains would not find so much uh, distance to be moved before they strike or collide onto the surface, obviously their momentum would be slower. Now, if supposing you keep on increasing the nozzle distance, then this factor increases, you know, because the momentum is higher and higher. But then there is also an additional factor of drag which comes because of atmosphere. Obviously, uh, the process is done in normal open atmosphere and there are going to be air molecules in the path of the abrasive and there is also going to be a cross collision effect which happens normally because these are all uh, you know if you look at the velocity profile it is coming out of a pipe. So, it is more like a pipe flow where the central <coughs> uh, regions are uh, of the particles which are in the central regions of the pipe have much more velocity in comparison to that of the sides. So, typically this profile looks something like a Gaussian with a maximum velocity at the center and, and you know tail, tailing velocity at both ends. And so, you can think of it that in such a case when the, the abrasives come out of the nozzle and it has to traverse for a substan substantial distance, there is going to be number one drag, atmospheric drag which slows down the abrasive and uh, also there is going to be cross grain collisions. Okay. So, <laughs> because of all that, there is a there is a tendency that the, the momentum again starts reducing beyond a certain nozzle tip distance. Now, this would not uh, affect up to some region where there is a cancellation effect that the on one hand the momentum is increasing and other it is reducing because of the drag. But then beyond uh, the point where the drag becomes dominant, you know obviously the momentum is going to reduce. So, therefore, if I wanted to look at the way that <coughs> the, the nozzle tip changes uh, the material removal rate. So, for the first few um, you know units of length, uh, the, uh, the material removal increases and then there is uh, almost a cancellation effect because of this increase and subsequently the, uh, the drag factor and then drag becomes predominant beyond which the MRR again goes down. So, typically it also affects in terms of the profile. So, you think of it that uh, this is uh, a case where they are showing nozzle tip distance of uh, let us say 0 0.031 inches which results in a diameter of a cut which is 0 0.018 inches and of course, the depth is more prominent here. Okay. But as you uh, change the nozzle tip distance to 
0.197, 0 0.394, 0 0.590. So, you are increasing the nozzle tip. So, obviously, there is a beam spread. So, your diameter reduces from uh, increases from 0 0.018 to 0 0.025, 0 0.059, 0 0.079 inches respectively. And if you look at the the allowable depth up to which the penetration is uh, taking place here, the depth also reducing with uh, the nozzle tip distance. So, obviously, uh, it will be more broader and shallow if we talk about increased NDTs and therefore, that control of accuracy of the exact cut size actually changes as the uh, nozzle tip distance is increased. <coughs> so, that is a very, very important uh, phenomena that happens in case of such grain throw machining kind of cases. These are actual cavities in several cases built by um, built in an experiment where a scale of this is about 1 mm and it's corresponding to a nozzle tip distance 2 mm, 6 mm all the way about 20 mm. So, there are different cases where it shows how shallow and wide the cavity becomes as the NDT is increased from 2 mm to 20 mm. <coughs> the two important parameters in case of uh, how the gas is flown and how the abrasive is loaded are one mixing ratio, another is the mass ratio. So, by definition mixing ratio m can be determined by the volume flow rate of the abrasives per unit the volume flow rate of the carrier gas. So, you can call it as u a dot by u g dot and uh, the mass ratio on the other hand the alpha can be determined as the mass of the abrasive by the total mass of the abrasive plus the carrier gas which flows out of the nozzle. So, in other words, you can actually if you wanted to put uh, you know rates instead of the total mass. So, obviously, these are function of time. So, you can have the abrasive mass flow rate per unit the abrasive plus carrier gas combined mass flow rate in this particular uh, uh, case. So, let us actually investigate one or two problems where we can see if we can calculate the mixing ratio, the mass ratio given some parameters in a process and arrive at some ballpark values where it is more important to understand what is the level at which you should operate in terms of mixing ratio and the mass ratio. <laughs> so, let us actually do a numerical problem now where we are talking about an AJM <coughs> machine with the mixing ratio which is about 0 0.2 and we want to calculate what is the mass ratio, the ratio of the densities of abrasive and density of carrier gas is given to be about 20. So, we know the mixing ratio equals V A dot by V G dot and the mass ratio is M A dot by M A plus G dot. So, rho a v a dot divided by rho a v a dot plus rho g v g dot is equal to alpha. <coughs> so, alpha is basically the mass ratio here, the rate of flow of abrasives by rate of flow of abrasive plus the gas. So, 1 by alpha becomes equal to rho a v a dot plus rho g v g dot divided by rho a v a dot which is 1 plus rho g by rho a v g dot by v a dot and that becomes equal to 1 plus 1 by 20 times of 0 0.2. Remember the air to the abrasive to the carrier gas density is given to be 20. So, obviously, rho g by rho a would be 1 by 20 and similarly, the volume flow rate of the gas to or the abrasive is just uh, the inverse of 0 0.2 which is actually the mixing ratio. So, this becomes equal to 1.25 in other words alpha becomes equal to 1 by 1.25 uh, which is actually equal to 80. So, given the density ratios of the abrasive and the carrier gas. So, given the mixing ratio and the abrasive to dense uh, you know abrasive to carrier gas density ratio we can calculate easily the alpha or the mass ratio for any process. Let us look into another problem. We have a diameter uh, of a nozzle which is about 1 millimeters and a jet velocity of 200 millimeters per second and we want to estimate what is the volumetric flow rate in centimeter cube per second of the carrier gas of the abrasive mixture. We assume this nozzle to be uh, circular because of the diameter factor that is there. So, the cross sectional area here of the nozzle orifice is 
given by pi r square and so the volume of the air plus <coughs> abrasive gas plus abrasive uh, and the volume flow rate will be actually given by this cross sectional area which is in centimeter square times of the <coughs> velocity in centimeter square again and so many centimeter cube per second is the volume of the abrasive and the gas this becomes equal to 50 pi centimeter cube per second it is actually equal to about close to uh, 106 155 <coughs> centimeters per second approximately so that's how uh, you know uh, the <coughs> volumetric flow rate of this particular uh, nozzle can be calculated. We now look, uh, try to look at the, the constitution of the machine which uh, uh, helps in doing AJM. So, basically there are various parts of the machine probably you realize this is the nozzle, this is the workpiece fixture in which the workpiece can be held and the distance between the two is also known as the stand of distance nozzle. So, beyond the nozzle there are many <coughs> different parts of this particular machine. For example, there is a abrasive fitter, the feeder, there is a mixing chamber. On one side there is air in flow which is uh, regulated pressure wise by opening and closing set of valves which comes directly in the route of a compressor. So, the compressor feeds compressed air into this particular circuit through the valve on this mixing chamber. Obviously, the compressor would have a relief valve, they would have a air filter come dryer which maintains the air quality which is being compressed. There is a pressure gauge to indicate what is the pressure at which the compressor is operating. There is obviously a relief valve given to the compressor to drain off what excess, whatever excess pressures are felt within the compressor chamber. And so typically the <coughs> air abrasive mixture happens here because of the hopping effect or hopping process. The abrasive feeder hops the, hops the, the abrasive grains into the uh, the uh, the ambient air and the uh, the air abrasive mixture is again passed through the nozzle there's a pressure gauge add just in the close vicinity of the nozzle to have a look at what is the kind of ambient pressure that is uh, that is uh, being injected through the nozzle onto the onto the workpiece so typically uh, majority of these abrasive ma uh, jet machines are manufactured by uh, a single manufacturer called air abrasives and it is typically from SS White and company at New York. The uh, gas, gas propulsion system supplied supplies the clean and dry gas. Uh, typically, different gases like air, nitrogen and CO2 can be utilized for, um, for mixing abrasives uh, and to propel the abrasives. So, it can be supplied either by a cylinder or a compressor. So, typically compressor is preferred when it is repeated use case. In case of a compressor, a filter and a dryer may be used because obviously, it is a dynamic way to compress whatever carrier medium would like to set in to carry the abrasive. Uh, it is also to avoid the water or oil contamination of the abrasive powder. Gas should be non-toxic, cheap, easily available, should not excessively be spread when discharged from the nozzle into the atmosphere, so on and so forth. So, that is how abrasive jet machines are <laughs> carried out. Now, let us look at another mechanical process of substantial interest which is known as the ultrasonic machining or the USM process. So, the process was first proposed by this guy J. O. Ferrer in 1945 and uh, the first machine tool uh, using this USM principle or the ultrasonic principle was designed uh, about 9 years later in 1954 and originally uh, it was used for finishing process particularly for those components which would be otherwise produced by electro spark machining or electro discharge machining, but it became a very important development and a almost an independent process which did not have any more finishing requirements, but actually uh, beyond finishing requirements more into machining. Okay. So, uh, now today ultrasonic machining can be used for fabrication of microstructures, particularly if you want to uh, make a very small high resolved hole in a silicon wafer. The best way to do that is through USM. People have made bulk micro machined piezo sensors uh, which would otherwise monitor pressure on a silicon membrane by using uh, uh, very accurately using the USM process. 
So, it gained a lot of prominence in, in machining electrically non-conducting, semiconducting and brittle materials, uh, particularly in the expanding electronics industry. And let us look at some of the uh, basics of USM, particularly what really uh, USM is, how it is different from abrasive jet machining. And again, is the mechanics of uh, material removal same as AJM or different? So, let us look at how the basic removal process of uh, material takes place in USM. So, it basically involves a tool which is otherwise ductile and tough. You can see this tool right here, ductile and tough tool which has a feed force and there is a slurry which is injected into the work zone um, at a certain pressure. So, the idea is that the tool moves against the slurry into the workpiece as if you sort of ploughing the individual abrasive grains into the workpiece and the mechanics again is that is involved is through brittle fracture. So, the material that is being <laughs> machined here is mostly brittle glass, silicon, other ceramics, uh, so on so forth. And so, therefore, uh, impact of uh, a sharp abrasive grain because of a tool head uh, would be much more in comparison to what otherwise AJM process would do by just a grain throw action. It is also a case where there is a few grains which are thrown into the workpiece, but their material removal or the contribution to their material removal as we will actually evaluate later is insignificant in comparison to the MRR because of the actual direct hammering and ploughing effect. So, here you have a active hammering of a grain causing a fracture and so MRR rates, the material removal rates are much much higher in this case in comparison to simple uh, abrasive jet machining processes. So, the tool head <coughs> vibrates with a high frequency, there is a continuous flow of abrasive slurry, uh, small gap maintained between the tool and workpiece and obviously, uh, the tool being gradually fed with uniform force creates impact of the hard abrasives which fractures the hard and brittle work surface and this is, uh, is the majority, uh, is, the, is the major mechanism of removal of the work material. So, it basically removes the small particles, uh, small wear particles and they are carried away very easily with the, um, with the, with the stream that carries the slurry. So, the medium which has the slurry in fact is also the carrier medium for the, uh, uh, the, the fractured pieces of the work piece which are generated because of the machining action. So, tool in this case is normally uh, tough and ductile it wears out much slower in comparison to the workpiece. One of the reasons why workpiece gets removed because of uh, uh, tough and ductile, ductile material. Uh, abrasive obviously is going to be much harder and it is going to create an impact both on the tool side as well as the workpiece side. And so, we will have to put all these things into the model when we try to build up uh, a mathematical model for material removal as in this particular case. The frequencies which are typically used in this case is as high as about 20 kilohertz, uh, amplitude of motion is very small, typically about 15 to 20 microns, which creates an impression in the, in the work piece. <coughs> so, let us look at some of the, uh, you know, uh, geometric uh, approximations which are involved in, uh, you know, uh, the ploughing action resulting in the material removal rate. And for this, the, the best reason or the best, best theory which has been proposed so far is by uh, M. C. Shaw. And the Shaw theory has uh, certain assumptions which are involved in uh, order to geometrically model the situation. So, that you could actually look at things from a perspective of material properties like hardness, ultimate strength, etcetera on one hand and the geometry of the grain and the relative motion between the <coughs> tool and the workpiece. Okay. So, it is a complex uh, uh, would say mechanics problem when we talk about USM uh, you know model of estimation of the material removal rate. So, let us look at Shaw theory. So, some of the assumptions which <coughs> uh, the Shaw theory takes into account are that the hammering of the abrasive particles on the work surface is typically done by the, by the tool the impact of the free abrasive particles create the material removal mostly on the on the work surface. There is of course, uh, some uh, removal because of cavitation effect. Obviously, the tool is vibrating at almost uh, uh, tens of kilohertz, I mean probably orders of magnitude about 20, 20 kilohertz or 40 kilohertz in that particular range. And so, the tool is supposed to move much faster in comparison to the relaxation property of the medium and the medium always lacks behind uh, uh, the tool, which may be 
resulting in uh, some kind of gaps and some kind of bubbles and these bubbles are uh, responsible for mostly uh, carrying away or sometimes even creating uh, additional impact effects on, on the work surface. And so, the erosion of the material mostly you can say even if the fracture is developed and the material is semi fractured can be uh, propagated through this uh, cavitation mechanism because of the highly vibrating head. And so, <coughs> also there is a chemical action sometimes associated with the fluid used where there can be a pre softening of the material made because of uh, the USM process. So, uh, I think I will close this module now, but in the next module I am going to work on this Shaw theory with the assumptions that have been made here uh, as potential causes for material removal in USM and uh, then look at geometrically how the material removal rate can be modeled. So, as of now thank you so much, bye bye.